Thank you, choir. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Amen. Enough said. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's funny. Um, I think about God's Word all the time and read the Word, and one of the things that uh, really sticks out to me is how Jesus, while he was here on this earth, his desire was to bring glory and honor to his Father. And he did that. And he did that well, and he has charged us to do the same in all of our thoughts and deeds. And uh, I just want to give you an update on uh, what we're doing uh, with Christian Bowhunters of America. Um, our local chapter, as you know, has procured uh, some space at the local YMCA. And uh, we have, uh, we began a project back in, I guess it was probably April or May, and uh, they have uh, given to us a place in the basement of the YMCA that was used to be used in the Armory as an indoor firing range, a rifle range. It's 50 uh, yards long. And I have Jim, hopefully he's going to have a couple slides for me. There's the very first slide. There it is. That's what we inherited. It looked like a dungeon. But thanks to Kent Reichard and Bob Breeze and... Uh, Gordy Grimes and Jeff Robinson and who else has played a role in coming out and helped us clean out that room and brush the, uh, the stone off the walls and, uh, and then paint it. So look at the next slide. Look what we turned it into. <laughs> <laughs> to, to God be the glory. We're really proud of that and we're really looking forward to using that for ministry in the uh, weeks and months to come. Not only are we going to minister to children, but we're hoping to minister to adults. Christian Bowhunters of America is a ministry, you know, to the bow hunting and archery world, but it's for men, women, and children. It's not a men's group. It's a family-oriented ministry, and we just love teaching people about archery and sharing Jesus, most importantly. So we're looking forward to doing that. I do have another slide I want to show you. Now that right there are two of the three animals that we have inside there. We have a real live buffalo and a real live caribou <laughs> chained to the wall. And we're going to shoot them. <laughs> but that just gives you an idea. And thanks to guys like uh, Rick Foster who have already donated an artificial Christmas tree that they had no use for, we're looking for more. So I'm trying to uh, promote uh, not only the, the YMCA and the archery range, but also any of you that have an old Christmas tree that you're not using that you would like to donate, we would love to have it because we're going to put in there probably four to six more targets 
and we're going to surround them with Christmas trees so it looks like all these animals are in natural woodland settings. And uh, it's going to be really nice, and it's going to be a great opportunity to minister to people. People will come out, and they will participate in this because they love the outdoors. They love archery. Not all of them are Christians, but it'll give us a very relevant opportunity to share Christ with these people. So I pray that you will get behind us, it, 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 at least praying for us. There's another slide up there. That shows you the indoor range and its length and its entirety. The caribou and the buffalo are all the way to the back. We had uh, a thing a couple weeks ago, we had some kids there and we were shooting bullseye targets with the kids and uh, they had an absolute blast. And if Jim, you'd show the final slide for me. If you can, there you go. And that just gives you an idea of what it looks like in the range uh, with kids shooting bows and arrows. And if you look over here in the bottom left, I don't know if you can see him, Darlene, but that's Corey, is Darlene here? Darlene may not be here. Okay. But at any rate, that's what we're doing. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had our annual 3D shoot at the Yates Carlton Sportsman's Club. And we had the opportunity to uh, um, uh, put 20 targets out there uh, for people to walk through the woods with their equipment and shoot at these different targets. But at each target, we had a scripture. Um, and it's, uh, it's, if you take a walk on this 55-acre horseshoe, um, you're going to walk the Romans road and you're going to hear and you're going to see scriptures that tell you basically there is none righteous, no, not one, all the way to, you know, if I confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So as people are waiting for people to shoot, they're reading these scriptures. So we just pray that God's word fell on receptive hearts yesterday. We know we had a great time. We had a lot of men, women, and children. We had an awesome time. We thank God for the beautiful weather, um, the safety, most importantly. And uh, we uh, raised a few dollars for Christian Bohorners of America, which will help us buy more targets. Just need to give you an indication of how much these targets cost. That buffalo that's in there, um, if I were to go out and buy that today, it's $2,100. The caribou is $1,700. So it's a lot of money uh, to purchase these, uh, these targets and equipment and uh, pro provide this uh, service. But I pray that God will meet that need and he will bless us. Amen. And I just thank you, uh, Yates Baptist Church, for getting behind us and praying for us and pitching in and helping. And uh, you've been a blessing to me personally, and I thank you for all your help from the bottom of my heart. And uh, we just want to give all the glory and the honor to, and praise to God this morning because he's doing a great work and he's opened a, a door of ministry here in Orleans County and we're really looking forward uh, to what he's going to do in the days ahead. So if you're interested in getting involved or at the very least praying or at least giving me your old Christmas tree, get a hold of me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and for this opportunity to minister for you, Lord. I thank you uh, so much for the ministry of Christian Bowhunters of America, a ministry to the bow hunting and archery world, uh, seeking to exalt Jesus Christ and lead lost people to him and encourage Christian growth. We thank you for that, Lord, and we pray that you would use us mightily in this community for your honor and for your glory. Lord, we thank you this morning that we've all gathered here for one re reason, Lord, and that is to bring glory and honor to your name. We look forward to what you have in store for us this morning. We thank you that we have a place that we can come to publicly and worship you, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you for all that you've done for us. You're a good God and you're worthy to be praised. And let everything that has breath this morning praise the Lord. We thank you for this time together. We look forward to hearing from your word. And we just pray that uh, you will bless each and everything. And most importantly, Lord, that you'll help us apply these principles that we're going to learn this morning to our lives. Help us to be better for it, and help us to be pleasing in all that we think, say, and do. For it's in the name above every name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Merrill. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And you heard it. We all have breath, so we need to praise the Lord this morning. 528. My faith has found a resting place. 528.
are still listening to you sing. Our next set, hymn of praise is 633, open our eyes. Again, I want to mention this morning, we do have Sunday school classes and uh, Bible time and good teaching. Tuesday night, deacons meeting uh, here at 7 p.m. Is that right, Merle? Okay. And Wednesday, family night. And uh, we also have our prayer and share time in the sanctuary uh, during that time under in their groups. Okay. Uh, Katie Klotzbach approached me this morning. There are flowers for you folks out in the vestibule, so uh, avail yourself, <laughs> okay? So we're very thankful for that, and many, many blessings. Flowers, always nice to have flowers around, isn't it? What a beautiful thing. And Thursday, we have men's discipleship. We're trying to get back on our regular schedule uh, this time. Uh, so that'll be Thursday night at 7, and then Kingdom Forward coaching video with our Sister in Christ Sue Mendelson next Sunday night, 6 p.m. Okay. Are there any other matters that should be brought to our attention before we press on? Okay. If not, let's grab our Bibles turning to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 2. Book of Proverbs chapter 2. What a joy it was to see Steve and Tricia Thompson again. Uh, the only time I'd met the Thompsons was on the big screen at her bicentennial. And that was precious enough, but to have them right here, uh, what a joy to meet this dear couple. It didn't take long to, to love that pair. <laughs> uh, they really love the Lord and are serving him in an area of the world that is very needy, especially the island of Maui right now continue to pray for recovery and the relief needs there in that part of the world. Proverbs 2, verse 1. <clears throat> my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment, and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord 
gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. Amen? This is the word of the Lord for us today. Choir time.
want everybody to know that today is Colleen Smith's birthday. And Brad Klotzbach. <laughs> I think that's the makings of a nice duet this morning, don't you? <laughs> Happy birthday, Colleen and Brad. <laughs> Getting younger, I see. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lori, for the choir. It's a joy to sing in the choir, and uh, some of you may not feel you have much musical talent, but you make a joyful noise of the Lord. Amen? I guarantee you this, when you get to heaven, your vocals will undergo a marvelous transformation <laughs> and make American Idol look pretty sick. <laughs> really will. Simon Cowell, the whole crew. <laughs> he bounces around a little bit. Anyways, that's beside the point. <laughs> The ushers can come forward to help us with the morning offering today. And again, we're so thankful for all of you that contributed to uh, the Farwell family. My, you know one thing that's exciting financially? Our father's rich. Amen? Amen. <laughs> you believe it? He's not only rich, he's infinitely rich. Whatever our need. He can handle it, it's no problem. All we have to do is what? Ask. We'll get into that later. Rob, would you offer the blessing on the offering, buddy? Sure. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for providing so much for us, Lord. <clears throat> we just thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to, to worship you in our giving. And we just pray that it would be used, Lord, for your glory and for your kingdom. Mm. Amen. Amen. They would stand, but they're a little tight. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Jackie. Appreciate that. We'd like to sing a lovely hymn of the faith that probably hasn't been sung for eons, the beautiful garden of prayer. Uh, you have an insert. It's not in the hymn book, so you could look all day. It's not in there. <laughs> Now, I have an assortment of hymnals that I have access to, you see, so I sneakily work my way around and find some songs that really have a good message. So let's stand as we sing this from the insert.
experience that beautiful garden of prayer? My. This coming Tuesday, I hope to do some chapel services at the Willows and Orchard Manor in Medina. Appreciate your prayers. It's not only good to see residents attend, but to see staff members get involved and to sing and to hear God's word. So I'd appreciate your prayers. We want to be effective in these places where we have an open door, and I'm thankful we have an open door there. And we want to not only enter, but we want to represent Jesus clearly, be a good ambassador for Christ. And uh, I, I'm so thankful for the lovely receptionist at Orchard Manor who's a believer. Uh, she's just so welcoming, lovely smile, glad to see us having chapel there. And that's encouraging. We're thankful for that. And so we're very thankful for Merle and Mitzi. Glad to hear your event went well. We prayed for you. And uh, God hears and God answers prayer. And we've been doing a little bit of a series on prayer. Uh, I think that's a, a good series to do. We hope your prayer life is taking wing and doing something. We pray that you're experiencing prayer that gets results, that it isn't just a bunch of words that bounce off the ceiling. But when you talk to God in the name of Jesus, you know you're getting through. Uh, I, I'm so glad we don't get any long-distance dialing charges when we pray. <laughs> We can talk about long distance, and yet it's not long. <laughs> In fact, he's right there with us. And we can talk to him like we'd talk to our very best friend. I kind of like to prayer time to be a nice little fireside chat. S sitting down with the Lord and, and just having a good, uh, honest and cozy chat <laughs> with him. And... Uh, uh, I place a lot of value in prayer. I don't know what I'd do without it. I don't know what I'd do without your prayer support. Uh, as much as we appreciate the financial support of you folks to remain here at Yates for the time being, it's your prayer support that is key to everything. Uh, we could not function well without it. Uh, perhaps the greatest lack in the church is sometimes that area of prayerlessness. We've talked about this earlier. Uh, every Christian can pray and should pray. Children should pray. Teens should pray. Moms and dads should take time to pray. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, we can go on and on with this. Uh, there's nothing that unites like prayer. And so with all that in mind, let's pray. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for what we're about to receive. We trust it's right from you. This is not my idea. This is not my opinion. Lord, it's your authoritative word. And I pray that you would move in a wonderful way in our church. Thank you for our church family. And Lord, what you're doing, you are always at work here, there, around the world. And on this day, we pray you'd continue to add dear people to your church, that living stones would be laid in place, and Lord, that that marvelous superstructure of the church we know is going to be built and finished. And when it's all ready, you will come, and you will receive us unto yourself, as you've promised. Lord, we pray that you'd continue to be with those that are going through weakness and are hurting. Uh, Father, we pour out our hearts for Donna Bentley. She has need that only you know completely about. You're so well aware. You're the only physician that's always there, always available to talk to, to communicate with, Oh, how well you know the needs of the body, the needs of our soul, the needs of our spirit. Bring Donna comfort and help. 
And may thy will be done with her earthly path and journey. Thank you for countless people who have been influenced to Jesus because of her voice, because of her stand. We thank you for her gospel witness, which has been so consistent, even when she isn't feeling up to snuff and feeling herself. Yet she radiates Christ. Help Brad and the whole family. And Lord, prepare hearts. Thank you, you always know what you're doing. You never make a mistake. Lord, you're always on time. We pray you'll minister there. Help the Wilsons and Bill Wilson Sr. We pray he'll continue to stabilize. We pray that you would continue to bring healing to uh, the Farwell family and Jessica and the children as they adjust. We pray for Jim and Kara Wacob that they'll adjust as they've had to say goodbye to a loved one. Uh, we pray, minister in these precious families, Father. We thank you John can be with us this morning. Give him much encouragement along his pathway and journey. Thank you again, Lord, that we have our freedoms to meet, and we pray that we would maintain those freedoms. But Lord, as a country, as we have, as it were, derailed, it seems, we pray that we could get back on track. And God, this can happen as long as we are spending time in prayer, making sure our own backyard is clean. Help us in these days of uncertainty, for those that are hurting and suffering with weather issues, we pray they will recover, whether it be flooded areas, whether it be fires. Father, it would seem that you're really working overtime to get attention. And in these last days, we pray that we would pay attention. God, the ark is still in building, the, the door as it were, the ark is still open, but there's coming a day when that door you will shut. And then it will be too late to get right with you. If there's someone here this morning that isn't ready to face you, to deal with eternity, we pray they would get, make their peace with you this morning and come to Christ. Thank you, Lord, we can come and we know that when we come to you, you will in no way cast us aside. So thank you for that assurance. And now just open our eyes. Help us see Jesus. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts ready to receive and apply your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's grab our Bibles turning to James chapter 1 today. James chapter 1. You have a guide sheet tucked in your bulletin. Look it over. Just a few words to fill in. There's all kinds of things I've scribbled on my uh, sheet here that I want to pass along to you. Time flies and you have fun. <laughs> we know that for sure. But I wanted to address this issue of unwavering faith today. <clears throat> unwavering faith from James 1. I'd like to start verse 5, reading through verse 8. James 1, 5 through 8. James writes, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James chapter 1 verses 5 through 8 today. 
Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. That three-letter word all is so vital in the scripture here. Seeking him, searching for him with all of our heart. Patrick Morley wrote a book, uh, the one he came out with earlier is Man in the Mirror. If any of you guys have ever picked up that book and read it, you know the, the good things found there. Man in the Mirror. He also wrote a book called The Rest of Your Life. And I want to share a statement he makes in that book that I think is quite vital and touches us in our culture today, something we need to remember. He says the turning point of our lives is when we stop seeking the God we want and start seeking the God who is. Do you see the difference? The turning point of our lives is when we stop seeking the God we want and start seeking the God who is. Good statement. A guy that's very sensitive. I think this book was, came, came out in the 90s, and here we are uh, 20 plus years down the road, and it's just as true as ever here. But this morning, I want to share some thoughts about this matter of faith. Because when he says, if any of you lack wisdom, I would dare say we all lack wisdom now and then. Amen. And we need wisdom more than ever to navigate in our land and our culture today. John Calvin, the great theologian, one time made the comment, nearly all the wisdom we possess, that is to say, true and sound wisdom, consists of two parts, the knowledge of God and knowledge of ourselves. Knowledge of God and the knowledge of ourselves, John Calvin. I want you to look in verse 5 and you'll see the source of genuine wisdom. The source of genuine wisdom. God is the genuine giver. In fact, literally, we could, we could ask, or we could state here, if any of you lack wisdom, let him, let him ask of the giving God. Let him ask of the giving God. Wisdom, Herbert Lockyer stated, is not gained, but given. Therefore, if wisdom is given, it's simply a gift, okay? Wisdom is available from God, it's given, and since it's given, it's therefore a gift. It can't be earned, it can't be bought. With all the money in the world, people could attend all the wisdom seminars. Unfortunately, our cultural seminars on wisdom is self-help. You know, it's awfully hard to practice self-help when, biblically speaking, we're helpless apart from Christ. Sheep are helpless apart from their shepherd. That's the analogy in the Bible. We, we cannot, in and of our own strength, help ourselves. We need the Lord. And apart from Him, as Jesus said, we can do nothing. James wrote, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. <laughs> you won't find it in this old world. It's from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. James 1.17, later on in our chapter. I, I don't have this on your guide sheet, but I want to look at a, a real contrast here, because the Bible puts it in categories here. There's God's wisdom and then there's the wisdom of this world. Okay? James chapter 3 verses 13 to 17 give us qualities of true wisdom. 
I would also encourage you to look over the first two chapters of 1 Corinthians, because both are contrasted in those chapters here. But th there's the wisdom of this world, and there's the wisdom of God. Okay? The wisdom of this world is the wisdom beneath. <laughs> okay, so the wisdom beneath. The wisdom of God is the wisdom which is above. Okay? Wisdom beneath of this world Wisdom above, which is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of this world glorifies man. The wisdom of God glorifies God. <laughs> Not us, but Him. Okay? There's a lot that glorifies man today. There's a philosophy out there that's been around a while, but we call it humanism. We're only human, right? <laughs> But humanism glorifies man. If it glorifies man, then man is God. Isn't that what Satan tried to convince Eve of in the garden? Oh, God knows if you eat that fruit, you'll become as him. You'll be as gods. Very relevant, the way people think and feel today. Glorifies man. Wisdom of God glorifies God. I'd say the wisdom of this world is unsound. And that means unhealthy. Not very nutritious. What's philosophy? Philosophy is the love of wisdom. However, a lot of our philosophy classes today don't really share sound wisdom. <laughs> Who am I? Why am I here? What will happen to me when I die? Right here. This is the place to turn. And you'll have every one of those questions answered clearly and in a satisfactory matter here from the Bible. Who am I? Well, the Bible tells us God made me. God loves me. Who am I? By faith in Christ, I'm God's child. Why am I here? I'm here to obey God and honor Him and keep His commands. <laughs> that was Solomon's conclusion in the whole book of Ecclesiastes. This is the whole sum of the matter. Fear God, keep His commandments. What's he say? For this is the whole duty of man. Now, this deals with worldview in the whole nine yards. We hear these words now and then. We need a biblical worldview. Well, it's hard to have a biblical worldview without the Bible. <laughs> okay, get, let's get into it. There certainly is a worldly worldview out there, and it leaves God out of the picture entirely. The wisdom of this world is earthly. The wisdom of God is heavenly more than one way. <laughs> wisdom of God is heavenly. The wisdom of this world is natural. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God because it's all foolishness to him. Neither can he know them and understand them because they're spiritually discerned. Why can he not spiritually discern the things of God and things of truth? Because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay? If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, Romans 8, 9, he's none of his. The, nat the wisdom of this world is demonic. We're, now we're getting into heavy-duty territory. The wisdom of this world is demonic. Where does it come from? It really comes from the pit of hell. The philosophies and teachings of this world system are governed by the God of this age, who is the devil. What's really frightening is to look at 1 Timothy 4.1 and realize that even our churches are setting aside sound doctrine from the Bible and turning to doctrines of demons. Instead of spirit-filled people, our churches have become, unfortunately, filled with Satan rather than the Spirit of God. The wisdom of God is divine. 
Wisdom of this world's demonic. The wisdom of God is divine. The wisdom of this world is wisdom of words. <laughs> wisdom of words. Paul said, when I shared the gospel, I didn't come to you with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. He wasn't looking at eloquence and saying just the right words to maneuver his audience, you see. The wisdom of this world is foolish. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Indeed he has. Obviously the wisdom of God is wise. Someone once said it wouldn't be a bad idea to read a chapter of Proverbs every day. <laughs> That'll keep the devil away. <laughs> Book of Proverbs, if we were to summarize it, it could be summarized in this way. Either going down the way of the wise or you're going the way of the foolish. And isn't that the way it is? Not many shades of gray here, you see. We're either going God's way or we're going our way. We're either going the way of the word or we're going the way of the world. We need to choose. The source of genuine wisdom is God. Secondly, notice with me the simplicity in getting it when we need it. He's writing to believers, Jewish believers. That's significant also in our study of James. The simplicity in getting it when we need it. God doesn't give us all sorts of forms <laughs> to fill out and make sure we put her name at the top and sign on the dotted line, turn it in. In fact, this is so simple that it's downright childlike. I've talked about this before. I did not say childish. I said, this is very childlike. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. All we have to do is admit that First of all, we have a need. Lord, I need wisdom. I'm facing a situation in my life right now where I need your help. I need your guidance to sift and sort through. Because apart from Him, uh, man, it can be kind of perplexing, <laughs> confusing. He's writing to believers who are going through tremendous trials. Don't you just love a verse that says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials? Uh, that flame's getting kind of hot, Lord. If you could turn down the heat just a bit, appreciate it. Uh, that's not the way it is always. God sends trials. What's he trying to do? He's testing our faith. And he states that. The trying of your faith worketh patience. Oh, don't we love that word? But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. All we have to do is admit that we have a need and all we have to do is ask for it. You don't ask necessarily, ultimately, mom or dad or brother, sister, we go right to God. Isn't it wonderful that because of what Jesus Christ has done, we can go right to the Father? Direct access. <laughs> Direct dialing. <laughs> we can go right to God and ask for what we need. But he says, and, and really here, Verse 6 is very key to our text. But, anytime you see that, that should get our attention right away. But, let him ask, what's it say? In faith. There's, we talked about experiencing answers to prayer because we obey his command and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John 3. 1 John 5, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've desired of Him. 1 John 5. Here, 
James says, be sure when you ask. Ask in faith, nothing wavering. A wave of the sea. Someone said that word wave could be translated like billow or a surf. Boy, I heard about Hurricane Lee coming into that New England coast. And my, the, the wind and the waves and the, the tremendous damage that can be done. As much instability as there is with our weather, the person who trusts God one moment and then begins to lean on their own understanding the next is an unstable person who can't expect to receive anything in prayer from God. I think this is pretty direct stuff here. Let him ask in faith. Jesus said, Mark 11, verse 24, Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, where does our faith come from, you see? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So if we ask in faith, it makes a lot of sense that we ask for things in line with God's Word. That makes sense. If I'm a Christian and I'm asking for something in line with God's Word and His will, I can be sure He will supply. He'll come through. It's not only nice to have assurance of salvation, it sure is nice to have assurance with our prayer life, <laughs> to know that it gets somewhere. So there's source, there's simplicity in getting it when we need it. And then notice thirdly, the bountiful supply of wisdom to those who trust God implicitly. God is the giving God. God so loved He gave His only begotten Son. Thanks be to God for His unspeakable, inexpressible gift. 2 Corinthians 9. God gives His wisdom generously. Isn't that what it says? He gives to all men liberally. God isn't stingy. God gives generously. Oh, how we need to really take this to heart here. God doesn't give us... I'm convinced when I see my God supply all my need, all these years... God not only supplies what we absolutely need day by day, but He gives us over and above what we need. And trust me with this, in America we have over and above what we absolutely have to have. What excuses are for a lack of contentment when we have more than enough? God gives His wisdom generously. I'm glad God gives His wisdom impartially as well. He gives to all. But you can see here that this is every believer. Anyone who asks for wisdom, God gives impartially. It could be a child. It could be a teen. It could be an adult. You kids that are in school, I'll tell you something. You really need wisdom to know best how to represent Christ in the corridor, the hallway, the cafeteria, where those things are no longer in use, no longer relevant. And they're, they're just passing along things that are just, it's just so unfortunate. In fact, uh, the immorality today is startling. The moral corruption in our country almost makes Sodom and Gomorrah look like a pretty nice place to live. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to, but that's beside the point. We are going in the wrong direction as a country today. And uh, personally, I really feel we may not need outside help to see destruction. Our country... Unless things turn around, we're, we're walking in a very self-destructive path. What's, what can ever turn it around? Some think it's beyond hope and help. 
America. I don't agree. I don't really think we've turned the corner to the point where there's no more hope. I believe it's a call not to the American public, but it's a call to the Christian community to get right with God. To pray, to turn from our wicked ways. Wicked. Our churches, my backyard, at times. It's time to get right with God. And only God can bring national healing when His people are in line with His word and will. And I'm so thankful, finally, that God gives His wisdom ungrudgingly. Lord, I need your wisdom again. Lyle, how many times have I given you wisdom and you're asking for it again? Yeah, Lord. <laughs> Although he doesn't say, he doesn't come to me that way. <laughs> I think it'd be more like this. Lyle, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you took the time to ask for it. Do you believe I can give it to you? Yeah. Where does God give us His wisdom? Right here. His Word. Paul wrote to Timothy, Timothy, stick with the things you have learned. The things you've been taught. Knowing of whom you've learned these things. From a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. What's, it, what's he say? Which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures what? Given by inspiration of God. So God's wisdom is found in God's Word. And I'm so thankful that I can <laughs> learn God's Word of wisdom by means of the Spirit of wisdom. And I share with you today, the Bible even announces Jesus Christ is the very wisdom of God. That's what it says. Jesus is the wisdom of God. So, let's draw close to Christ. Because in Christ are hidden all the treasures. This is mind-blowing, folks, to me. I hope it is to you, too. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's a mammoth, in-depth statement right there. Father, may we be men and women of unwavering faith. Faith in your promises, faith in your word. May we not be like the foolish man that is restless and, and Father, tossed about with the wind and the waves and the wild surge of the sea. May we be stable. May we be men and women of faith, men and women of the Word. And God, we pray that we'll be men and women and young people and children of prayer. Oh God, we know that you are able to rescue our land before it's too late. Help us to work on our own backyard and then to take from there to help somebody else. For Jesus' sake, amen. I'd like to sing a closing hymn, number 527, taken right out of the Bible, I Know Whom I Have Believed.
May we walk in wisdom, walking in the truth. in the truth and so lord may we walk with you this week's great spiritual exercise and lord thank you for what we can learn areas where we can grow know our bible better and how to pass it on effectively especially the gospel with those who maybe to this day have never ever heard it may we be led to those who are ready to our hungry who need hope for jesus sake Amen. Amen.